Hey guys, today we've got two stories that were submitted into our subreddit, NickBeardyOYT, links down below. And um, we thought they were really good, so we made a video. And we're going to be making another video next week of other submissions. So get your stories in, boys. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And we'll see you at the end of the video. Javelin of Equal Opportunities by Klondike96 Buckle up, kiddos. We have a legend for my very first character ever. Enter Yentimo, the half-elf fighter, with starting stats straight from RN Genus himself. I rolled this character up in front of everyone and didn't recognise the importance of the three 18s I had just rolled. Even as my party looked on my thrice-blessed monster of a man with awe and terror, I did not realise what I was unleashing on my poor DM. Up until the entrance of Yentimo, my party had run two or three sessions and had already drawn party lines. We had Eloandria, a chaotic good wood elf druid. I'd be calling her Ellie because that spelling and pronunciation is a nightmare. Don't me, right? <laughs> Don't. I kind of get the idea that he wrote that in. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he knows I can fucking read. <laughs> who mostly cared about trying to acquire a tiny pet griffin. We had Corn, good song, a chaotic good bard, high elf, who only put a spike trap in front of a burning hospital to kill the golems that ran in. Not to put his innocent death counter into the triple digits. <laughs> <laughs> he swears. <laughs> and we had Deborah. De oh, thank fuck, normal name. Deborah. <laughs> fucking big Debbie here. A chaotic neutral gnome sorceress lycanthrope who would, on full moons, transform into the late 2000s rap artist. <laughs> the party dynamic was pretty much Ellie against Corn, while Debbie kept the peace with wacky hijinks to distract whenever tensions get too high. Upon my entrance, the party was now also held together by mutual fear that Yentimal would retaliate if either side showed aggression to the other. And so our party was complete and perfectly functional. You'll never convince me it wasn't. <laughs> Fast forward past numerous stories for another day, including the semi-accidental extermination of the pixie species. Semi-accidental? Extermination? Mm, semi. <laughs> <laughs> and my party finds itself in the capital city of the very racist high elf faction. Well, like, you know, does that not go hand in hand? High elves? High you know? elf are racist. Yeah, Tell me they're not. Like, you know, it... Okay, don't get me wrong. When it comes to high elves, like you know, back like years ago, used to be oh, they're just very snitty, they're whatever. No, like, they're you know. extremely racist. Yeah, they kind of. <laughs> now Ellie was acceptable, but looked down upon being a wood elf. Corn was adorned and paraded as a hero because he was a high elf who had taken credit for like an entire minor quest. Deborah was tolerated because we had convinced the city she was just our pet gnome. <laughs> <laughs> as pe as it should be, considering nothing more than pets. <laughs> but Yentimo? Hell no. A half-elf was an absolute abomination, and I was nearly locked up upon entering the city. Obviously, Yentimo didn't like this and just wanted to leave. Eventually, the High Elven Council, pronounced Circle Jerk, <laughs> tasked us with retrieving an item that was essentially a magic spear. We leave the city walls and into the forest. I pick up a stick and carve it into a spear and say, okay, let's go back. <laughs> Party looks at me like I'm insane, probably because this idea is insane. Party votes on the idea. Ellie and Corn finally agree on something, and it's that this is a fucking terrible plan. But Deborah's got my back, because she's nuttier than a fucking legume farm, and wants to see that happen. Party vote is tied, so we flip a coin. I win. We head back into town, up the hill to the council chambers, barge into the council meeting, and I present the mighty spear. DM, roll deception, natural 20. Hey. Me. Hey. <laughs> DM, <sighs> me. Hey. <laughs> Corn, harp plucking good song. No, it's a deception. He has lied to you. This is just a stick. Me. <laughs> the look of relief on my DM's face as Corn passed his persuasion check will forever be etched into my memory. Ellie somehow managed to convince the council that Corn should share the sentence that is given to Yentimo because she straight up hates him, but also managed to get herself and Deborah roped into the whole debacle too. So, F. <laughs> the party is sentenced to fight a dragon that has been terrorising the local countryside in some sort of twisted two-bird-one-stone logic. 
That is totally not a real road at all. <laughs> Corrin, being the good and lawful high elf that he is in the eyes of the Elven Council, was allowed a single very powerful family heirloom from a senior council member to aid in his survival against the dragon. The rest of us were given our old inventories back. Racist pricks. Oh, <laughs> get the fog. <laughs> a few rounds in and it's clear only Yentimal with his OP stats and Corrin with his magic fuck you stick are able to get past the dragon's AC. Fast forward a little more and we've managed to cheese it down to low health, but we're out of spell slots and ranged weapons. This means it's a little problematic when the dragon takes off to fly away. DM starts to set the scene of the aftermath as the dragon flies away when I pipe up that I'm next in the initiative and would like to take my action please. <laughs> he looks at me confused because, try as I might, even Yentimal could not hit an airborne dragon with a longsword. <laughs> I calmly explained that I do, in fact, have a rather pointy stick still in my inventory, and I would like to use it as a javelin. My DM, foolishly believing Yentimal to be mortal, allowed me to have my silly turn of defiance by throwing a stick at an impossible target. Crit. Hey. Um, roll damage, I guess. Max damage. DM nervously checks Dragon's health and factors in Yentimal's ridiculous modifiers. He begins to describe how the stick manages to hit a weak spot in the scales, but I insist to this day that I simply rocket armed the stick that damn hard. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to our still dirty and battered party, standing before the Elven Council, and the senior member who granted Corn the heirloom smugly says something like, Please present the most holy artifact that has finished off this foul beast. He undoubtedly expected Corn to produce his precious family relic. Instead, the half-elf filth who dares to return alive steps forward and produces the same damn stick he had tried to fool him with earlier. Outrage! Absolute pandemonium! <laughs> the guards attempt to arrest me on the spot. The council is in an uproar. Everyone is yelling. Everyone except Corn Goodsong. He stays quiet for a moment, thinking about his potential actions here. Finally, he pipes up. It's the stick, council. What? Corn. It's the damn stick, council. What do you mean? Corn. It's the damn stick. He finished the dragon off with a goddamn stick. Don't make me say it again. He killed the dragon with a stick. So now, sitting on the high acropolis in the holiest of elven cities, amongst many relics and cherished artifacts, is the javelin of equal opportunities. A stick one dickhead sharpened to stick it to the man. Too long didn't read. Try to fool a racist government into accepting a stick as a powerful weapon. Later kill a dragon with the same stick. Not bad going. Not bad. Not bad at all. Fighting the Thing and Losing by Minner. Be me. Run of the mill player in a group of five. Group is mostly family. Big bro is DM. Bro DM has to leave town for work for a few months. Rather than not playing, we agree that all players will take turns DMing one shots till his return. Should be interesting since I'm the only one who's ever run a game before. Hubs tells me that he has an idea. Hubs is a horror buff and wants to run a game based on The Thing. Oh, that would be, that really, would be very good. I, I would really enjoy that. Yeah. I think that would be a really cool yeah. setting. Says he needs a man on the inside. And I'm it since I've also seen the movie. Pointing out I'm not a man. Does this divert this? Oof. <laughs> No big deal since I'm cool with trolling the other players and think it'll be hilarious to watch the eventual PvP. We agree not to tell them what's going on and see how long it takes for them to figure it out. Invite some extra players so we have lots of cannon fodder. Hubs writes impressive original stat block and I write cliff notes for Hubs and exposition for players. Hubs drops plot hooks for the players in the group chat and tells them to come with third level mercs of any race and class they want. Also, they get one feat. They are hired to guard a border pass for the winter and will get buku money when spring comes. Game night rolls round. Pizza for everyone. Hub starts to describe the place and the job, then tells players to introduce themselves. We have a dark elf bard dead set on wooing everyone. A human paladin who is a total chad A human fighter who just needs some cash. A tabaxi ranger who hates chad humans. A human cleric, me. The sacrificial lamb. <laughs> the elf fighter who knows nothing but war. And my personal favourite, a warforged barbarian bent on protecting everyone. Oh, that's an interesting dynamic, man. Mm. 
I look over at my baby cousin who is the Warforged. I've known this dude since the literal day he was born and I can see in his eyes that he knows what Hub is trying to pull. Things just got interesting.exe. Hub gives baby cuz a dirty look but carries on. Describes how one fine frigid morning two ogres chase a battered sledge dog through the camp shouting in an unknown language. My god it actually is just the yeah, that is the inter- start of the thing. They deal non-lethal damage to a few players while trying to get to the dog. Meanwhile, dog runs straight into me and I try to shelter it from harm. It licks my face, puppy kisses.jpg. Warforge tries to stop it but forced to grapple one of the intruders. Meatheads have soon killed them and against Warforge and Paladin's better judgement, we put the dog with the rest of our sledge dogs. We find evidence that they all came from a wizard's tower on the other side of the border. Grip argued a lot but eventually decided that Paladin, Fighter and Tabaxi will scout it out. Tabaxi only goes to prevent Chad-like Paladin from setting everything on fire. Get there and the place is a wreck. Burnt out hulk of a tar. Crispy outbuildings. Mutated bodies burning in a pile and a very evil looking summoning circle. They beat feet back to the camp pretty fast. Meanwhile, Warforge insists we burn the intruders bodies and then plants himself at the front gate until others get back. When they do, they tell us about what they find. Everyone gets edgy, and we draw lots for the night guard duty. Myself, Warforged, Tabaxi and Paladin all get watch duty. Meanwhile, Hubs tells all remaining players that while they sleep, something slips into their rooms. He makes them all pull slips of paper from a hat. Face gets pale. Oh, I like that. I, I like, like that. I like that. That's something a bit yeah. different that you normally don't yeah. see. Yeah, I like that. Face gets pale. Everyone gets more edgy. Everyone gets more pizza. (laughs) Next day passes without much event until night. When we hear a commotion coming from the dog pen, we investigate only to find a thing in the middle of the pen, mutilating the dogs. Tabaxi instantly yells, This is why I hate dogs! Warforge wants to grapple it and tries to keep us all away. I use sacred flame, but it doesn't do too much. I'm just thinking of the movie. I know. So I tell him to go get out one. Mate, secret flame. Oh, I only got that. Yeah. They've got the flamers. They've got oh, the flamers, yeah. Oh, mate. So I tell him to go get out wands of fire from the armory. Suddenly, I get shot in the back. I take crit damage and die. Oof. Others start to panic. They don't know who killed me. Warforged tries another grapple but gets juiced by the thing in the process. The others get back with the wands just in time to see my body sprout spider legs and walk away. What the fuck, JPEG. Elf fighter panics. Falls on her ass and accidentally sets the bard on fire with her wand. Bard stops, drops and rolls, but it's low on hit points. Tabaxi bolts into the courtyard, followed by the two fighters. The paladin starts to run, but then remembers the poor warforged who looks like the victim of tentacle hentai at this point. He and the crispy bard cut a few of the tentacles loose and the warforged managed to pull free. Not knowing what else to do, they sprint into the courtyard too. Everyone at the table looks shaky. Obviously not many of them have seen the movie. Suddenly, Spider Cleric approaches them. It's too much for them and everyone's flipping bolts in opposite directions, shooting wildly and running heedlessly into minus 50 degrees blizzards and refuse to come back. That's where the adventure ends for the night, since all the other players were too chicken shit to return to the fort after that. But despite everything, the group loved it and we watched the movie afterwards. Well, I have to say, I really enjoyed that javelin at Griff and this one with the thing. I love the idea of using, like, movies and shit yeah, as just I, templates. Yeah, I love it. I love it Like, so you know, much. instead of doing all these weird home movies, why not just, like, what other good horror movies could you use? As a template, I think maybe Cenobites, maybe Hellraiser could be a yeah, cool one. Yeah, Hellraiser could be a really cool one. You know, like Haunted by Demons yeah. and shit. I think that'll be a really cool setting. I wouldn't mind doing that myself. Fucking Leprechaun. <laughs> oh, the Leprechaun would be a great one. You could do honestly any like murder mystery or like you know monster in the lagoon. You know that type yeah. of shit. You know, like nineteen fifties style yeah. horror movies. I think that would be a really good setting. Yeah. But no, like both of these were submitted into our subreddit. I think both of them were really cool. So if you guys have any of your own stories definitely post them down below and we're going to be doing some more from our subreddit next week so uh yeah so get your stories in so you can get into the video 
all that shit. Also, also the subreddit is also a lot of memes. So post to, to, yeah, post it. memes in it as well. I love to see memes. Post memes. <laughs> yeah, post the memes. Just post anything. I don't go yeah, fuck. I don't care. <laughs> we're, we've, we've been over this before. It's like, like there's a good chance we're probably going to get quarantined because. But let's push it and see how far we can go. Yeah, <laughs> it's only a matter of time. But All look. links in the description for Discord models, the fucking subreddit. Everything like that. I keep Go s- check it out. I, I keep near saying keep f- fucking Discord. calling, calling it the Discord. Anyway, anyway, like as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all of the good shit, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!